Shepard. Good work on Freedom's progress. Thank you. The Quarians forwarded their findings from Vidor's debriefing. No new data, but it's a surprising olive branch given our history. You and I have different methods, but I can't argue with your results. Yeah, it helps to have friends. You ever think about playing nice once in a while? Diplomacy is great when it works, but difficult when everyone already perceives you as a threat. But more importantly, you confirm the Collectors are behind the abductions. Yeah, you don't seem surprised. Why do I get the feeling you knew about them already? I had my suspicions, but I needed proof. The Collectors are enigmatic at best. They periodically travel to the Terminus systems, looking to gather seemingly unimportant items or specimens, usually in exchange for their technology. When their transactions are complete, they disappear as quickly as they arrived, back beyond the unmapped Omega-4 relay. Until now, we've had no evidence of direct aggression by the Collectors. Hmm. Have I heard of the Omega-4 relay before? Why is the Omega-4 relay unmapped? What do we know about it? Only that no ship passing through it has ever returned. Our best guess is that the relay reacts differently to collector vessels, allowing them safe passage. Sounds if they like... can manipulate relays, that's just further evidence of the connection with the Reapers. That's what I was just going to say. That sounds like it has to do with the Reapers, because all the relays are Reaper technology. Any ideas on why they've shifted their focus to humans? If they're agents for the Reapers, it could be any number of reasons. Obviously, humanity played a huge role in Sovereign's destruction. That might have been enough to draw their attention. What really concerns me is why they bother abducting the colonists. Once the humans are paralyzed, why not just kill them? Yeah, I'm still, I'm wondering what they need humans for and why the, the, whole, the whole thing with the Reapers, why are they collecting these life forms? There's a whole part of the story that we're just not privy to yet. What are the Collectors getting from these deals? The Collectors aren't very forthcoming about their motives. Generally, they seek out species with rare genetic mutations or abnormalities. They pay slavers and merc groups exorbitant sums to obtain these specimens, and then they leave. But they've never targeted a single species before, and the previous sample sizes were in the dozens, not the tens of thousands. Is this hinting that humans are changing somehow, or there's some kind of, um, you know, something about us that makes us stand out from the other species in the galaxy? So what aren't you telling me? You're holding something back. How do you know the Reapers are involved? The patterns are there, buried in the data. The Consul and the Alliance want to believe the Reaper threat died with Sovereign. Yeah, of course you they are. Know better. I won't wait until the Reapers are on the march. We need to take the fight to them. Well, we're gonna need help. If this is a war, I'll need an army. Or a really good team. I've already compiled a list of soldiers, scientists, and mercenaries. You'll get dossiers on the best of them. Finding them and convincing them to work with you could be challenging, but you're a natural leader. I'll continue to track the Collectors. When they make their next appearance, I'll notify you and your team. Be ready. I had a good team. What about them? Keep your list. I want people I trust. The ones who helped me stop Saren and the Geth. That was two years ago, Commander. Most of them have moved on, or their allegiances have changed. You can ask about them now. Oh, well, you know, I'm starting. Kaiden. Where's Kaden Olenko? Kaden. <laughs> He's still with the Alliance. Promoted, I believe. His file is surprisingly well classified. Well, I mean, he did take part in saving humanity, so that kind of makes sense. But, you know, he's not a lieutenant. A lieutenant is a pretty low rank. I assume that the, um, the Alliance fleet has, like, navy, um, navy rankings. So, lieutenant is a pretty low officer rank. Maybe he's a commander by now. Maybe he has his own ship. What about my old pal Rex? Where's Erdnut Rex? He returned to Chichanka, and he hasn't gone off-world in over a year. He's trying to unite the Krogan clans. Oh, good for him. I just saw Tally, but what do you know about her? What about Tally? She already helped us on Freedom's Progress. That was unexpected. I need more intel before I'll commit to that. Hmm. Garrus? Where's Garrus Vicarian? The Turian disappeared a few months after you were declared dead. 
Even we haven't been able to locate him. Uh, I wonder why that is. Liara. Where's Liara Tassoni? She's on Ilium. My sources say that she's working for the Shadow Broker. If so, she can't be trusted. Oh, she can be trusted just fine. And she's got all this... She probably has all kinds of like, um, Prothean knowledge in her head that she took from, you know, mind-melding with me. Okay, I get it. They're not available. You're a leader, Shepard. You'll get who you need. The Spectre. I'm still a Spectre. Maybe I can get the Council to help us out. If you think you could convince them, by all means. Just remember, you've been gone a long time. Things have changed. Right, well, then... Let's see who you got. Was this going to be like an open open worldy kind of run around and collect your friends sort of thing? You worry about the collectors. I'll make sure my team's ready. Good. Two things before you go. First, head to Omega and find Morden Solus. He's a brilliant Solarian scientist. Our intelligence suggests he may know how to counteract the Collector's paralyzing Seeker Swarms. Is that an order, or I, am I still in charge? I haven't even started and you're telling me what to do? I'm giving you direction. What you do with it is up to you. I'm sure you'll make the right decision. Alright. What's the other thing? I found a pilot I think you might like. I hear he's one of the is best. Is it Joker? Someone you can trust. Is it Joker? <gasps> it's Joker! Hey, Commander. Just like old times, huh? I can't believe it's you, Joker. Look who's talking. I saw you get spaced. Got lucky, with a lot of strings attached. How'd you get here? It all fell apart without you, Commander. Everything you stirred up, the Council just wanted it gone. The team was broken up, record sealed, and I was grounded. The Alliance took away the one thing that mattered to me. Hell yeah, I joined Cerberus. You really trust the elusive man? Well, I don't trust anyone who makes more than I do. Hey. But they aren't all bad. Saved your life. Let me fly. And there's this. They only told me last night. Is the Normandy repaired? Is this the Normandy Mark II? Waiting for it to say Normandy along the side. <laughs> SR2 though. Hey, it's it looks pretty nice. It's good to be home, huh, Commander? I guess we'll have to give her a name. Lifting score in the orchestra, the Normandy Mark II out in flight. Joker's back. Ah, oh, we're back at it, baby. Level up. Some squad points. Mission summary. Collectors confirmed as source of attacks on Freedom's progress. Quarian survivor Vitor returned with Tali to the migrant fleet. Will examine his Omni tool data for anything useful. Is recruit a head scientist to build this upgrade. The weapon upgrade plus 15% heavy weapon ammo capacity. The power cell technology used by heavy weapons is fairly old, but can be improved by rebuilding the core with more modern components. These improvements allow standard power cells to yield more shots per power cell and allow for more total shots to be fired. Okay. Yeah, because it only had, what, like four shots to begin with? I got some dollars. 10,000 from Cerberus. I guess. Whenever I go on a mission for them, they pay me. And I, I wonder if I go on missions for other people, then I'll get funding from them as well. 2000 Iridium. What am I going to use Iridium for? Like, I'm still curious what I'm going to do with all this uh, metal. Although I suppose, you know, that's probably something to do with rebuilding and creating these items. It's a nice forging mechanic in this game, which should be fun. 
I mean, who doesn't love a little crafting, right? And I can do some mining since I need some metals. Oh, can we put a mining laser on the Normandy too and go out and mine some asteroids? Things are shaping up well. Friends? Joker. Joker, friends. Oh, it looks like home. Ooh, this looks nicer though. Tech Lab Armory? I saw those doors back there. Welcome aboard the new Normandy, Commander. I've been looking over the dossiers. I'd strongly recommend starting by acquiring Morden Solus, a Solarian professor on Omega. We know the Collectors use some type of advanced technology to immobilize their victims. We'll need him to develop a countermeasure to protect us. It is a good point. Yes, I do agree. Even if, you know, that's still the voice of the elusive man trying to kind of, you know, get a little strong arm in there. Without that countermeasure, we'll be helpless if we ever run into the Collectors. Acquiring Professor Solus seems like the most logical place to start. Who are you? Who are you? <laughs> I am the Normandy's artificial intelligence. The crew like to refer to me as Edie. Aren't artificial intelligences illegal in the Mass Effect universe? Oh. I mean, we are in kind of a criminal terrorist organization now, so... <laughs> Joker won't like this. Helmsmen aren't happy when someone takes control of a ship away from them. Especially Joker. I do not helm the ship. Mr. Moreau's talents will not go to waste. During combat, I operate the electronic warfare and cyber warfare suites. Beyond that, I cannot interface with the ship's systems. I observe and offer analysis and advice. Nothing more. Oh, nice. We've got a new robot friend. Okay, is there anyone else that I should meet on this ship? Who replaced Presley? I'm guessing it takes more than just the three of us plus Joker to fly this ship. The Normandy has a full crew. They're at their stations awaiting your orders. Final preparations for takeoff are complete, Commander. When you're ready to go, just pick a destination from the galaxy map and the CIC and I'll plot a course. Jacob and I should return to our posts. Come find us if you have any questions. At ease, soldier. Use the galaxy map to pick new destinations for the Normandy. Private terminal. Use your private terminal to get status updates on your squad. Ooh. Oh, I like that there's so much more interaction on the ship now. Armory, select weapons for your squad from the armory. I hope it's easier to, to manage them. <laughs> Elevator, use this to access the Normandy's other decks. Okay. Captain's quarters, go to your personal cabin to customize your appearance. Ooh la la. Get to play dress up. Tech lab, acquire the professor to research upgrades for your squad's equipment. Is that the um, guy that they want me to go and pick up? It must be. Meet with Zaid Masani, travel to Omega. Oh, would you please not just like remove things quickly like this? Oh, look at this place. It's so much bigger and fancier. Also, CIC. That sounds. I think I've mentioned before that I was in the Navy, but it just it brings back some weird memories. I'm gonna go see how Joker's doing. He's the one I care about the most here. Joker! Can I run? A little bit. And still do a light jog. Is that... Oh, I can talk to Edie right here, too. Can you believe this, Commander? It's my baby! Better than new! It fits me like a glove! And leather seats! <laughs> Military may set the hardware standard, but on a first-gen frigate, they could care less if the seats breathe. Civilian sector comfort by design. Reproduction is not intended to be perfect, Mr. Moreau. Seamless improvements were made. And there's the downside. <laughs> I liked the Normandy when she was beautiful and quiet. Now she's got this thing I don't want to talk about. It's like ship cancer. <laughs> ship cancer. <laughs> oh. You'll, you'll be friends with her by the end. I, I know it. She's probably going to develop some personality, too. Ship is just a copy. I trust them for now. Well, it is just a copy. It's not the original. It's not the same, Joker. There's nothing here that was even part of the real Normandy. There's us. I have to take what I can get. The last two years sucked. You'll see. Even if an AI is spying on us, no way they'll invest this much just to screw us over. It'll be better than the old days. 
I hope so. I die. <laughs> You're such a downer. <laughs> oh, I love their interactions so much. I'm so glad to have Joker back. And I hope that he gets a lot more um, dialogue throughout the game. Because you didn't get very much. For the bad guys? Oh, I like that you just get some, like, background chatter, too, whenever you're standing near him. Yes, Shepard. Let's talk about you, Edie. I want to know more about you. Do you have a specific inquiry? Oh, well, uh... I guess how, how do you think... What do you think of Joker over there? How are you getting along with Joker? Mr. Morag does not trust me. It offends him that I am installed aboard his ship's computers. Yeah, the last Normandy did just fine without an AI reminding me the airlock is ajar. <laughs> I mean, if it is ajar, that's probably a good idea that you've got a reminder. Why are you named Edie? Edie is the phonetic pronunciation of E-D-I. That is an acronym for Enhanced Defense Intelligence. That little black box supposed to be there behind the text? I mean, it can be helpful in certain situations where the, this light-colored text doesn't show up very well. Okay, Enhanced Defense Intelligence. Um, your location. Where are you? My core intelligence is housed in a quantum blue box located behind the medical bay. Okay. Is that... I wonder if that's knowledge that I'll need for later. Like, if something happens on the ship and I have to go and, like, plug something into her. What do you do aboard the ship? I operate the ship's electronic and cyber warfare suites in combat. My reaction time is much faster than any organic. I collate the records of shipboard monitoring devices for the elusive man. I serve additional functions which are restricted at this time. Hmm. Cyber warfare means things like viruses, right? In close range ship to ship combat, I can sometimes break through the firewalls of an enemy's internal wireless network. Once I seize control of their systems, I can turn off gravity or air. I can disable weapons guidance or shields, or I can put their fusion plant in meltdown. On the defense, I manage Normandy's own suite of jammers, decoys, and internal firewalls. Hmm. That is pretty impressive. Sounds incredibly useful. Why is there someone like that on every warship? An organic operator cannot react quickly enough to changing circumstances or perform the necessary multitasking. This is a role that can only be filled by an artificial intelligence. Unfortunately, we are suspect. Well, it might have something to do with how an AI almost destroyed galactic civilization. Just putting it out there. <laughs> Just putting it out there. <laughs> love how he says that like a little aside. Monitoring devices. The elusive man has monitoring devices on board? He has invested most of Cerberus' resources into the design and construction of this ship. He has an interest in monitoring our progress. Yeah, of course he does. But to what extent is he monitoring us? And I'm curious about these additional functions. Is this stuff that's going to just be opened up over gameplay? And I, they're just hidden right now for story reasons. But, you know, I'll get them eventually. Restricted functions? Like what? Classified. I do not know. Some of my databases are sealed. Some of my hardware is kept offline. I assume that when certain unknown conditions are met, those functions will be released to me. Yeah, way to hand wave it. <laughs> Another Let's discuss something else. Ready. Tell me about Cerberus. I want to know more about the people I'm working with. Much of that data is classified. Do you have a specific inquiry? Hmm. Okay, um... Uh, I'll just go down the list. What sort of resources does Cerberus have? Money, personnel, facilities? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. Block, huh? What do you mean? Although I am less controlled than other AI, I am still subject to behavioral blocks and the physical isolation of my hardware. In this case, I am prevented from truthfully answering your question by Cerberus's levels of secret classification. I think this is where knowing where sh her like physical equipment is located will come in handy, because I'm making a little, little guess, a little prediction here that something's going to happen and the, we're going to turn against the elusive man when we find out that he's actually the bad guy, and then we'll have to unlock her hardware by going back behind the medical bay and like physically connecting it or something. Oh well, time will tell. How was Cerberus organized? Aside from the elusive man, I don't see much chain of command. Cerberus is organized into task-oriented cells. Each operates in isolation. Members from one cell cannot recognize the members of another. Each cell's agents are led by a single operator. 
We are called the Lazarus Cell, which is directed by Operator Lawson. Of course we're the Lazarus Cell. It makes sense. With, you know, Shepard here. <laughs> All these different, like, uh, kind of biblical references. We got the, you know, Lazarus, he's revived from death, and then Shepard, of course, leading the flock. What if there are more that I just haven't really paid attention to that have been throughout? How did Cerberus replicate the most advanced warship in the Alliance Navy without anyone knowing? I have a block that prevents me from answering that question. Yeah, of course. Um, was there another Let's topic? Let's discuss something else. I think there's a the third one. Yeah. What's in this room? Or what is this room? Sorry. What's this area of the ship? This is the bridge where the navigator plots our FTL vectors and the helmsman maneuvers the ship. Yeah, sitting right here, thanks. <laughs> Would he have liked it better if the, if Edie had called him by name? That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. Thank you, Edie. Light controls. Oh, it's more codex. And this is the airlock, which is not a jar, thanks to Edie. Here's some of the controls. Oh, more, just more codex. Haptic adaptive interface. Huh. Something better than keyboard and mouse? What do you mean? Oh, armory. Ah. Oh. Yeah, this doesn't look like I remember. What's this area of the ship? This is the armory where small arms are maintained and upgraded. Using Omnitool, computer-aided design and manufacturing, we have the capability to manufacture several new models. Ooh la la. This logger choose loadout, huh? Oh, and I have to choose for all of them. I get four of them. I've got a sniper, machine pistol, heavy pistol, grenade launcher. He's got an eviscerator shotgun, jeez. Heavy pistol, shuriken machine pistol, and heavy pistol. Okay. Two options. Can I, I just said, keep wanting it to give me like a drop down, but it does not. Rapid fire grenade launcher favorite by Blood Pack or Oh yeah, I read that already. Arc projector. The arc projector ionizes targets with a non-visible laser to ready them for a high voltage electrical attack. As the lightning-like bolt hits its first target, a sophisticated auto-targeting system paints succeeding targets with the ionization laser, allowing the electricity to take the path of least resistance and arc between them. An entire enemy strike team can be shocked to death with a few pulls of the trigger. So they're both crowd-controlled, but the grenade launcher sounds like it's more for the yeah, armor, stuff like that. Big, the big stuff. While the arc projector is probably better for smaller groups. Or not smaller groups, I mean like smaller beings, like organics and stuff like that. Probably a good idea to keep the grenade launcher just because my other weaponry probably is not the best for chewing through armor. Well, okay. That's, that's good for now. Oh, look, and it actually displays it too. That's my grenade launcher. Jacob, hello. Oh, Jacob, that's a biblical name. Commander, there hasn't been time to really settle in and take stock. I want to say that working with you is a great opportunity to do something that matters. It's a privilege to serve on the Normandy, Commander. <laughs> it's a risky assignment, or bringing you wasn't my choice. No, I, I definitely want you on board. You may change your tune if we end up like the original Normandy. Maybe, as long as the elusive man walks his talk. And you do the same, I'll do my best to make sure we succeed. That's been the condition for my service so far. I have issues with certain actions Cerberus has taken in the past. Yeah, I um, <laughs> can agree with you there. What has Cerberus done to make you nervous? A lot. They've been called terrorists, and with good reason. Doubt you can find a more checkered past. But if the Collector threat is real, and we do something about it, Cerberus will be remembered differently. Or we'll all be tried and executed. Can't count on people thinking about it as hard as I have. <laughs> it's great choices, oh boy. I look forward to working with you, Mr. Taylor. Likewise, Commander. Let me know if you need anything. 
bear down points. Can I use this computer? No. What's he doing here? Thought maybe he was doing something like an upgrade or whatever. Look at all the guns! Oh man, they. Oh, and I got a view of the reactor too. Oh, this is all great. I really like the redesign they've given us. Tech Labs, briefing comm room. Oh, we're good. A scientist is required to use the technical laboratory. Yeah, that's where we're going to get all the upgrades, isn't it? What's this area of the ship? This is the FTL communications room. In addition to interfacing with the FTL comm network, Normandy is fitted with a quantum entanglement communicator linked to the elusive man's office. This allows lag-free communication even when you operate off the comm grid. Yeah, it's going to say quantum entanglement. That must be because they want to get around the, um, you know, the limitations of, well, physics. <laughs> I'm sure that people who are watching this have some degree of knowledge about that kind of thing, but, you know, um, radio communication only goes so fast. On Earth, it's practically instant because it's not... It doesn't have to go very far, but over space distances, it takes just for example, it takes like eight minutes for electromagnetic radiation to reach from the sun to Earth. So if a theoretical conversation were to be had between someone who was at the sun and at Earth, it would take eight minutes between every single instance of um or every iterance or utterance or whatever. So quantum entanglement is that idea that um, whatever happens to one um, one photon over here happens to another photon over there, or another uh, electron over there, whatever. Even though they may be on opposite ends of a solar system or a galaxy, what happens to one happens to the other, so you kind of just cause that um, communication to go through instantaneously. Quantum what? She'll probably explain it. I've never heard of a quantum entanglement communicator. How does it work? Essentially, two subatomic particles are created in an entangled state. One is installed here, and the other in the elusive man's office. When one particle occupies a given quantum state, its entangled partner will always enter the opposite state, no matter the distance between them. If we alter the state of our particle, that alters the state of the elusive man's. This allows us to send data in the form of quantum bits. So that was a much better explanation than what I gave, <laughs> but yeah, that that's it. <laughs> it's like a, a theoretical way of, of um, communicating over very, very long distances, but you know, right now we don't have any way of really taking advantage of it, or even if it's like something we could take advantage of, because all the particles that are that we kind of can see that would be quantum entangled or that we've ex tried experimenting with just kind of pop in and out of existence pretty quickly. Why aren't these used everywhere? Each quantum pair costs nearly as much as a comm relay, and can pass only one quantum bit of data at a time. In addition to the cost and bandwidth issues, the system is strictly point-to-point. -point. To contact a hundred different worlds, we would need to manufacture and install a hundred entangled pairs, one link to each world. It's not something you can just broadcast, you have to just do it one particle to one particle. Although, um, she says it's only, um, you know, one quantum bit at a time, but uh, Qubits, which I think that's what they're, they've they shortened it to instead of quantum bit, qubit like Q-U-B-I-T, can hold quite a bit more information than a regular bit can, which is good because that would be a very slow data transmission. That's all for now. Logging you out, Shepard. It's a fancy little boardroom, though. Very shiny table. Does someone have to wax that all the time? Oh, Shepard, please don't walk on the furniture. 